Hey, what's going on? This is Beer Today, Beer Tomorrow, and we are here at the well once again. Five Borough Craft Beer Fest. It's a, it's a great day. It's a little bit of a rainy day, but we, we were sold out here. Good times. Got to shout out Chelsea, FA Cup champions. Uh, so it's a good day, and I'm here with a very special guest who returns to the show. Uh, one of our favorite guests. Sir, please introduce yourself. Hey, Peter. It's Rich from Bridge and Tunnel Brewery. Rich, how you doing, man? Another year? Yeah. Another event? Packed this year, huh? I know. Yeah, man, a lot, big turnout. Had Absolutely. a lot of new breweries too, a lot of different faces. So, so before we get into the different faces, what are you guys pouring today? Uh, it's funny we were we brought our uh, a sour porter with um, crushed black cherries, and then we were going to bring an IPA. We have our bagel IPA that we've been touting around. Yeah. Um, but my buddy John, who's covering the jockey box right now, he said, you know. It's probably going to be IPA heavy. Why don't you bring our uh, milk stout, which we kegged last week. And uh, so we brought that. So we have two. We have a stout and a, a porter. I uh, I tried the porter. Really enjoyed it. Um, that was really tasty. And I think it was a good move because, you know, th there's there are definitely a lot of uh, IPAs here. And I think giving it a little bit of a different perspective is always, is always a good thing. Yeah, for sure. So now, um, you guys got some, some new brews in the works. Any, any exciting things you, you can talk to us about today? Exciting. Um, well, yeah, I mean, the summer's coming. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of the summer these days. <laughs> I don't like what it does to the brewery with the heat and stuff. So I'm kind of like bracing, bracing myself for, uh, you know, trying to keep it cool and trying to keep the fermenters cool. Um, we don't have anything in particular that like we're hell bent on. Uh, I have a couple of things that I'm like working on in the direction for the brewery, um, but I'm not really putting it out there just yet. Um, there is one beer that I'm, I, I am kind of excited. I just dry hopped it today, that I'm I'm looking forward to putting out, and it's uh, I think, I think it's a little bit of a style bender, which is kind of comes natural for us. Yeah. It's going to be a black New England IPA. Really? Yeah. And, That's um, interesting. Yeah, it's brewed and it's going to be dry hopped, and you know it's dry hopping now, and uh, we're going to be kegging it this week. Wow. What's yeah. it? Uh, what's it called? We're naming it the Fifty Fourth. The Fifty Fourth. It's after the Fifty Fourth Regiment of the Civil War. Okay. And. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. If anybody's curious about who the 54th Regiment was, you can sum it up as patriots that don't often get, you know, their story told in the story of the Civil War. So, really? we're, we're, you know, how we, we kind of try to keep the back road stories, bring them to the front, keep them on people's minds. This is consistent with the kind of storytelling that we yeah. gravitate toward. And so we're bringing these guys to the front. So now, are you guys going to be canning this, or is this? Yep, we're going to be canning it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Are you going to have a little bit of the story on the can, or is this? Gonna we're going to be, be brief. Of... Okay. Because partly because we want people to think about it. Okay. We, we're going to let you know, kind of let people do their own exploration. Interesting. Yeah. I love that about you guys. It's all it's all one way or another. It's it's definitely tied back, tied back to the history. Yeah. Which is which For is always sure. always a good thing. Try to keep it significant on some level, you know, at least with the name, you know. Absolutely. Hijack the name and give tell a story, and you know, even if it has nothing to do with the actual beer itself, you know, it's got a little connection though in some yeah. way or another. Right? Whereas this one has a bit of a connection on both sides. You can find connections with the style and the name. But okay. yeah. so this is one where you challenge challenge the audience to do a little bit of uh, self, a uh, little bit of investigation, right? Yeah. If they're curious about what the hell we're talking about. All they got to do is ask their computer. And then from there, I think it's just going to, you know, it'll take its own path, you know? There you go. There you go. And, and your buddy just dropped all of his trail mix yeah. right on the floor. Um, but that's exciting. The, the, the 54, looking forward to that. So now, um, obviously, you know, outside of your own brews, are there any brewers here that you're kind of excited to try some of their stuff that you maybe haven't tried? Yeah. Um, I got an eye today for, uh, like, some farmhouse... Uh, ales. Um, we just had something from the uh, what's it? Prison City, Prison City. Yeah, they they they, um, they had like a dark sour. Okay. Uh, what was it aged with? Was it aged in some? They, they had some uh, 
it was some other process to it other than just being a dark sour and it was real nice and then we're, we're also next to common roots yeah they have they have like a whole sour program and they had something that was really special too um yeah so i'm kind of like cherry picking right now looking for like you know a little funk yeah you know is that kind of like now we're transitioning spring summer is that more so what you like to drink nah you well, know I mean, season. I like, you know, we're for sure we're going to keep our stouts and porters on the whole year round. I mean, like, yes. I, I just feel like, you know, there's no good reason to not drink dark beers during the summer. It's, sure. it's kind of, you're going to, you're going to eat a meal chock full of, you know, grilled meat and all other kinds of heavy, you know, items that you're going to like, you know, chomp down and like, it's going to lay on your stomach for people to say, Oh, I can't drink that beer. It's too heavy. It's liquid, for Christ's sake. <laughs> drink the goddamn stout. Drink a porter. It doesn't matter what temperature it is. It's still going to refresh you. This you know? Absolutely. Okay. All right, right. Thank it's, you, man. It's such a unique taste. Well, thank yeah. you, man. I'm drinking the sour porter, and it's such a unique taste that you got going on here. Cool. It's great. You yeah. want to talk with, with that? cherries, with crushed, cher crushed black cherries. Um,. I'll tell you a story about this one. You want me to tell you a story? Absolutely. All right. So two years ago, we made this beer, and it's funny. In my in my space, we um, and people kind of make fun of me over it sometimes. But like, I only use like, yeah, Mark, my buddy Mark here. Um, you know, Mark. My, Mark Demont. Yeah, Mark comes in here. He comes into he comes into my space. Uh, he builds shit. Time. <laughs> um, yeah, Mark, Mark is a it's a good friend, um, but so we we only we don't, like I only use like temperature gauges that are like you know old school analog kind of things. You know what I mean? Like just regular temperature gauges, thermometers. You know, because one time I had a, a digital thermometer and I used to use it to measure my. I used to measure my uh, the temperature of my mash, right? Yeah. This one particular time, two years ago, we were um, we were making what was supposed to be our vanilla porter. It's a robust porter recipe, six percent, right? And we mash in, and the reader is coming out at 165 degrees. I'm like, holy shit! And we have a big dairy tank mash ton, so like you got to be very careful about the temperature. It's not like you know, you, it's harder to control and you got to harness your temperatures. So it was at 165 degrees and I was like, man, this is too high. It's way too high to mash in. Should be between 150, 155. So I happen to have a whole block of ice, you know, like in bags. Yeah. We started dumping ice into it, right? Temperature's not moving, right? Like what the hell is going on, you know? Start throwing in cold water totally messing up our grain to water ratio temperatures not moving right finally i i put my hand in it and it was like lukewarm I'm like what the hell i went and got one of my old school thermometers took a regular you know reading yeah. as i used to until one of my buddies pressured me to get this goddamn digital thermometer <laughs> and the thermometer just basically crapped out and we were down oh, at like man. 130 degrees so now I was like, all right, well, I guess we're not going to make our robust porter the way we usually make it. So I messed around, got it back up, got it back up to temperature for mashing in. Now the water, grain to water ratio was all jacked up. And we ended up making a sour porter out of it. I had never made great. a sour porter until that, that batch that we were basically trying to recover from this robust porter. Wow. Ferment, you know, kettle sour, then fermented it with American ale yeast. Put it on tap, ran it through our, our Randall with uh, cherries. Man, what a what a goddamn hit that beer was, man. We ran it all through the, su the summer. And it was basically born out of a mistake. I had an so, orgasm. So two years later, we're coming back uh -huh. for it. You know? It's a beautiful mistake. Yeah, man. So And, and that basically laid it out as one of our styles that like we, we stick to, you know? Yeah. No, it's cool. a great, great beer. Yeah, cool. So, uh, what are you, you? You're just finishing that beer. What are, you, what are you drinking there? I didn't catch the name, but they're they're right across the, right across from us right now. I didn't catch the name of the brewery, but it, they had it listed as Wild Wild Ale, and it's another like wild, fermented, very tart. Um, cool ship. 
Right, with uh, with peach, I believe. Okay. And another thing, because the temperatures get hot in the brewery, it's a good time for us to make like beers that like can tolerate higher temperatures, ferment better at higher temperatures. Yeah. So we try to harness maybe like, you know, the 80 degrees that the brewery might be during the week, 80, 90 degrees even, and just take advantage of it and ferment at high temperatures and make saisons, you know, Belgian styles, maybe some wild stuff. Yeah. That's Absolutely. kind of where we're at right now, you know. Awesome. Really, really yeah. awesome, man. So uh, any, anything else uh, about Bridget Tunnel you want to share coming up? Anything coming up in the summer? Any events? Anything like that? Uh, well, there's going to be an event in June. I believe it's June 16th. Uh, it's going to be... Um, it's like a mayonnaise yeah. tuna fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma- mayonnaise yeah. tuna fish? There you go. There you go. Um, it's That's a, a great. That would be a great name for an event, mayonnaise and tuna <laughs> fish. There you go. It's a, it's an event over um, in Maspeth actually at the uh, the Knockdown Center. Uh, it's a it's a it's the third year that they're doing it, and okay. it's uh it's run by a, like a local Kiwanis group uh, club. Okay. Nice. But that's coming up. The I I, can't, I think it's next month. But not much going on, man. I'll be honest. You know, we just had like three back to back events weekends. Yeah. So I'm just kind of burnt out right now. I've been brewing since 4 a.m. So wow. I'm looking to just get one weekend that's quiet. Good luck. And, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. And again, well, so the next can release, when is that happening? Uh, well, we're going to be kegging it this week, um, probably within another two to three weeks, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Definitely be, we'll put be it on. out. And, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll post it on at least social media. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely be look on, uh, on the lookout. Oh, and for I was going to say, if there's anybody out there that wants to trade beer for uh, rebuilding a website, our website is certainly hurting. <laughs> so uh, just putting it out there if there's any listeners that are interested. Trading beer for that, – that's a good deal. We'll work for beer, right? Beer for a website. All right. That, fact, that, we'll trade anything for beer. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Rich, thanks again. Thanks yeah. so much for coming on the show, right man. Right. Love it every time you come on. Always got some great stories. Cool, Pete. So thanks, man. All right, man. Right cheers. Right. All right, cheers. So hey, what's going on? We're back, and we have a very, very special guest coming straight out of Queens. <laughs> Sir, please introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Sam from Iconic Brewing Company. How's everyone doing? Uh, we're doing great, Sam. Welcome back to the show. We, uh, it's been a little bit, but uh, glad to have you back on. And, and, and so, what are you? Uh, what are you currently drinking on? I'm drinking Residence Three. Uh, this is part of our rotational IPA series. It's dry hop with Melba. Uh, and Melba is a hop that actually got just destroyed by Australian wildfires, bushfires uh, yeah. this past summer. So we got one of the last. Uh, of the crop to make it out of Australia this year. So, wow. Special. So I had both beers you're pouring today. I enjoyed them very much. Definitely enjoyed Resonance. Can you tell us a little bit about the other beer you're pouring? The other beer is Jalapeno Saison. Uh, it is brewed with uh, about 20 pounds of uh, cut jalapenos uh, per 10 barrel batch. And we also throw uh, pounds and pounds of mangoes into that beer, so it, get, it has a nice fruitiness and it also has a nice spice to balance it out. Yeah, you know what, what's interesting about that beer is, I guess, because of the mangoes, it does balance it out. Like you, you get the jalapeno on the nose, and it's yeah. and it's and it's very very pungent on the nose, but it's very balanced when you're drinking it. It's very smooth. It's very dry. You get a little bit of heat in the throat, but otherwise, it's very dry, very crushable. That's why we wanted to say song because it's just so easily drank put that into any combination of uh, a little bit of a sweeter beer would be hard to drink but Saison is just so easily crushable absolutely absolutely I def- definitely enjoyed both those beers and now you guys you guys have been doing a lot of canning uh, recently so can you t- talk to us a little bit about that and what yeah. you guys got going on what's coming up yeah we're trying to come out with a can release at least once a month uh, we did our guap uh, which was our first can release ever um, we worked uh, with Daniel Birch as the artist came out with a great uh, can label um, it's a New England style IPA but not only is it dry hop with Amarillo hops but it's also aged on Spanish cedar so it, it kind of um, it kind of gets the grapefruit notes from the Amarillo but it also gets a nice citrus note from uh, the cedar as well very so nice very interesting beer and then we came out to chronic uh, maybe two weeks ago that was very popular that's dry hop with uh, Eureka and Azaka and also has some hemp seeds in it to give it a nice uh, uh, dank flavor right on right on and uh, so now you, you guys 
saying you're going to be canning every month. Can you talk about what uh, what's up next? Uh, yeah, we might have the Uptown Haze. It really depends on artwork. It's not the beer that's slowing us down. It's it's finding the right artist for the right label. Right. Uh, that's the hardest part. So you've been switching up every... Yeah, we've been switching up artists. We've been finding new ones. Uh, we found a good one that we, that we really like. Um, but it, it's just about the artwork right now. It's not, yeah. it's not the beer that's slowing us down. It's the artwork. Right. Uh, we really don't like to compromise on the artwork, and uh, so far everyone we've worked with has done a great job. But yep. Um, yeah, that's what's slowing us down right now. Is the all right, all right. So, yeah. Well, you know, you, it's got to be right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's be I right. mean, we have a, a few IPAs that we know. We actually have a few like uh, like Cream of Lawn we want to do in cans, but uh, that, that's what it is. Finding the right artist for the right label. Okay. Very, very cool. And now you got. Do you guys have any uh, upcoming events uh, uh, you could talk about? Events. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of doing the events. Uh, we, we have Horde of the Core, which we might do. It's a, it's a cider event. Yep. Uh, but we might we might be there. As far as other events, uh, we, we do a... Um, we're working with this uh, not-for-profit farm out in Nassau County, uh, which is, you know, an organic farm, which is one of the uh, biggest organic farms that's closest to the city, which we pour for. Um, and it's a it's a fundraiser because the county doesn't support them. Yeah. Um, so we're doing that uh, third Friday in June, I believe. And as far as everything else goes, I don't know. We're just swinging it. Just waiting to see. <laughs> just so swinging it. So now, I mean, this this is a pretty pretty awesome event. It's really well attended this year, despite weather's kind of shitty. But but the turnout's been great. They sold out. What what uh what breweries here right now are kind of getting you excited? Uh, Interboro gets me excited. Yeah, I, I like the fact that they're doing a lot of cool things, not just with brewing but with distilling. Yeah, um, they're they're kind of making their own pop oils. They're they're, they're aging on uh, uh, spectrum of light. Like they're doing they're they're doing really cool things. Uh, San City's here. They're doing awesome things. Um, just the New York breweries in general just blown up the scene. They really, are. they really, really are. I, I just, I just had someone uh, come to our stand from the West Coast, and like New York was late to the scene, but wow, they have really surpassed a lot of cities in terms of, in terms of uh, the scene. So. Yeah, I think, I think the flavor spectrum here is just kind of exploded. I think you can get like any type of style, any type of beer. I mean, I think New York, we, we, we still got a, we still got a bit of a way to go. But we've made up a lot of ground, and, and there's a lot of great beers in New York. I, I totally agree. Um, there's really too many to mention. Yeah, there, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on here today. It's a great fest. It's a great fest, but it, it's always great to have uh, to have local Queens guys on the show, man. Yeah, I saw, I saw you, would you have Bridget Tunnel right off of Yeah, we have Rich from Bridget Tunnel. Yeah, Rich has been on the show. I mean, this is probably his fifth or sixth appearance on the show. I mean, he's a great local. And just like you guys, he, he's an authentic, he's, he's a Queens guy. He's from Queens too, which is always, it's always a little nice, a uh, little, little bit of nice a a added bonus for us. But uh, I mean, so so what do you think about this event, you know, just going on right now? I'm actually surprised how many people came out uh, with the rain. That, that's great that we have this many people come out, support us even in the rain, even the the crappy weather. Yeah. Uh, they they're sold still out. coming out. Sold out. Uh, they purposely sold less tickets, from my understanding, so there's no lines for beer, which is also nice because yeah. there's not many times where you can go to the festival and you can kind of, you know, spread your arms a little bit. Yeah. So I, I kind of like that about this festival that you can go to pretty much anyone uh, and, and not have to wait too long for the beer. Yeah, and I like the I like the late. Uh, so we were here last year too, and it was a little bit more closed off. And they opened it up this year, which I think also really helps. Yeah, they also. Um, I recently did this uh, venue in at Blocktoberfest. Yes, I don't know if you were there for that, but it was a great event. All the, all New York City breweries. So that was also a great event. This is a great venue in general. Yeah, the well is. You can't go wrong with the yeah. well. The well is awesome. So is, is there anything that um, the audience should know about Iconic? Anything you want to tell them about Iconic? Yeah, pretty much. Um, we are expanding in the next few months. We're, that is exciting. We're opening a new location uh, in Long Island City on 11th Street. Uh, right on. Bigger brewery, bigger brew house, bigger uh, you know, taproom space, hopefully a small beer garden. It'll be cool. 
food and uh, oh wow yeah so we're when we're uh, when when is that roughly supposed to happen hopefully this summer but right. in the uh, works with, with the uh new york city department buildings you never know yeah you never know that's um, true but that is very exciting it's definitely more space yeah we need more space we need more fermentation capacity it's just we're growing we we outgrew our space so yeah that's it Th that is very exciting and, yeah. and and it's also exciting to hear that you're gonna be in, you're gonna stay in Queens yeah we're gonna stay in one other city what's what's nice is that we're also closer to the other uh, Long Island City breweries like yep. Big Al's Rockaway Fifth Hammer yep. so now for customers that's even more beneficial because now they have another brewery to visit and it's yeah. the same space with bicycle you can, you can walk you can walk it right whatever. yeah a couple dollar yeah. Uber ride whatever so Long Island City is really just in terms of breweries, it's it's a fun place to hang out. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That that's awesome news. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Uh, we'll definitely be on the lookout for that. I think that that's pretty awesome, man. Any anything else you want to let our audience know? Anything? I mean, that's pretty much it. Thanks for the listeners uh, for listening to uh, New York City Brew News. Uh, absolutely, man. Beer today, beer tomorrow. Yeah, man. That's what we do. And, and you know, we love all good beer. We're we're definitely purveyors of good beer, no matter where it's made, no matter where it is in the world. But it's always just a little bit extra special if it's made from Queens. So uh, that's right. Cheers, man, and, and uh, thanks so much for hopping on the show. Thank you. All right, man. Cheers. cheers. So what's going on? It's beer today, beer tomorrow. Back at it again. We have another very, very special guest joining the show for the very first time, sir. Please introduce yourself. Well, Rich calls me Mr. Clean, but my name's John, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm from Bridget Tunnel Brewery. Excellent, man. We love we love Rich. We love Bridget Tunnel Brewery. So, uh, so, so tell us a little bit. How, how did you, uh, how did you first get involved with Bridget Tunnel? That's kind of a long story. Do we have enough we, time? We, we got time. We got time. I know Rich from the old neighborhood. Him and I are both from Massmouth, yeah, Queens. Oh yeah. And uh, a buddy of mine and I had gone to a particular brewery and tasted his beer and said, you know what? Wow. We were, we were wowed by the beer, so we had yeah. to go to this place. And we went to the place, and it turned out it was his first year anniversary. So when we showed up, I kept looking at Rich thinking, like, I know this guy. Yeah. I know him from somewhere. All right. And my buddy's like, you got to go and talk to him. Just just go over to him. And, you know, he's busy. He's always talking with people, conversing, kicking things around. So I went over to him, and I'm like, yo, man, I know you from somewhere. And it turns out, you know, we just started kicking it around. And, uh, you know, we grew up in the same neighborhood, mm -hmm. knew the same people. And he asked me to come down for a brew day. And I guess the rest is history. Wow. That, that's pretty cool, and I, I really love Rich because you know, you got a lot of great breweries, got a lot of a lot of great people behind it. But Rich is an authentic local Queens guy, uh, and he's you know we, we we joke with him, but we always refer to him. he's the hardest working brewer in Queens. He is and brother. not not just in Queens, but he's the hardest working brewer in New York. I think in the United States. <laughs> Let's might be, be real. I mean, I mean, Let's be real. How many people are brewing like Riches? Not many, not no. many. I, I, mean, I mean, really, I'd like to meet somebody that's, that's brewing like Riches. Then maybe we could do a collaboration. There you go. But those people are kind of hard to find. It's very true, and and he's actually going to be the focus of uh, the Beer Boom movie, the uh, the documentary yes. too. Yes, he is, and he and rightfully so. He deserves to be. He does. He does. He really. does. Yeah. No, he's he's really really good dude. I don't think he gets the the, the props and the respect that that he deserves. And again, he's a New York guy, just like I am. We're yeah. born and bred. Yeah. What a real deal. No, I know, I know, and look, we love good beer no matter who makes it, where it's made, doesn't matter. But it's there. We were just t telling it on the last guest, you know, it, it's always a little extra special when it's in your backyard, you know. Exactly, and you know what? It's an extra special, uh, special place. It really is. You came down from Rock'em Sock'em. I love Rock'em right. Sock'em. That yeah, was that, great. Right, that was you, gotta, great. you gotta laugh because you know yeah. what? It's like, it's like neighborhood and it's camaraderie. Yeah. And everybody just comes down and everybody has at it. Yeah. It's a great night. It really and great is. Great beer. Absolutely. And and you know, it's we always talk about this on the show, craft beer is community. And and you know, places like Bridget Tunnel, you really feel that. It really, really is a community vibe. You get the vibe. Yeah, yeah. you get the vibe, man. You absolutely. really do. Yeah, absolutely. And the neighborhood's totally changed, but you know what? The people that come in, it's just it's an amazing bunch. It is. It, it really is. And I, I mean I mean you wanna go into race and all that other stuff, but I mean all races and creeds. I don't care what you are. Everybody's in there and everybody's having a good yeah, time. Yeah. And the best thing is, there's something for everybody there. There is. He's got Always. a lot on tap. That's it. He's got 16 tap lines, and yeah. there's all, there's something there for everybody. 
Which is great. Yeah. And I, I, I like to say the old Gil Martin, the milk stout. Yeah. That's the bomb. That's my beer right that, now. That's a really good beer. That's it. I'm like, Rich is okay if I take a growl home. And he's like, come on, man. You, come on. You really got to ask? And I'm like, no, I feel guilty taking it. And, and the, uh, um, the, the sour porter. The sour something. porter, the cherry. Oh, oh man, that was good. Yes. That was really, yeah. really good. Yeah. When I go over, when I go back over to pouring with him, I'm gonna give him a nice pat on the back. There you go. Because really, he knocked it out of the park on that. He did. You know, a lot of it is, you know, we got day jobs, man. We're not like a lot of these other guys. Yeah. You know, there's no financial backing. You know, there's not a lot of uh, modern equipment. You know, it's we're not pushing buttons and yeah. you know, we're breaking a sweat, man. No, I know. I know. Yeah. The, the the hot liquor tank was in a Chinese food restaurant. <laughs> there you it, go. Was, it was hit by a car. Uh, you know, and so, he straightened it with a car jack. He straightened it with a car jack. That's right. You know, it's funny because I don't know if it's because you're from New York and you got a great story, but we kick around stories all the time and laugh. Yeah. And laugh like you wouldn't believe, man. And that's no, what it's I, supposed to be about. It should. It's all about fun, man. It should be fun. Right? Yeah. yeah. Right? And and there's something like you you, you touched on. There's something a little extra special because, look, there's a lot of great breweries. But like you said, some of these breweries, they, they got a lot of backing. Yes, a lot they of, do, you know, man. They got a lot of money behind them. And I don't them. knock them for that. Nothing really. wrong with I, that. I really no. don't. Listen, I don't. who wouldn't love a lot of money behind them? That's it, right. Yeah. I wouldn't like, who wouldn't mind somebody showing up my doorstep saying, hey, man. It's about a hundred thousand dollars for you. See yeah. what you can do with it. Right. Oh, I'll show you what I can do with it. Right. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, who but then again, love it? you got that guy in your pocket, right? Yeah. You know, that guy's knocking on your door. It's not. He's not dropping a sack for free. No, it's give and take, right? That's right. That's give the way it works. Yeah. So Rich, Rich is doing it all on his lonesome, brother. He's got a heavy load on his back. He does. He does. And Benny, and he's he's doing he's doing a lot of great beers. I mean, he's doing a lot of great beers. Yeah, Always. you've been around for a while. You've come down many a times, man. Yeah. And like like you said, you know, there's a lot of good breweries out there. A lot of solid breweries, you know. And I think Rich, honestly, man, he's one of the standouts. And I'm not just yeah. saying that because I work there. I'm a fan, man. I'm a fan of craft beer. Yeah. Really, if you make a solid beer, I'm gonna pat you on the back. I'm gonna give you all the praise. You know, I, I, I love a good beer. I like to be wowed. Yeah. And I think that's what Rich does. He brings the wow factor. He does. He does. And and he's just a legitimately good guy. I feel like when you know his story, you just kind of appreciate it all that much more. Dude, you know? he started in the garage. He started in the garage. That's in right. In the garage. The freezing cold. That's right. He's in, he's in the garage. Possibly yeah. almost blowing himself up. <laughs> Right, right. Did he yeah. ever tell you that story? He, he did. He did. You he know, did. And, and when he tells it to me, I'm like, you just shake your head. Yeah. You know? He does have the best stories, too. Of, of anyone we brought on, he has some of the best stories. That's great, but I, I don't know if that's the New Yorker in us, because we it all have be. stories. Yeah. Every you New know, Yorker's got some good stories. That, that's it. You know, and it's it's a good vibe, man. Absolutely. Let's say it's a great vibe. It is a great vibe. It is. So now, So now... Obviously, we established, you know, Rich is doing some great things. You guys are doing some great things at Bridget Tunnel. Here today, big fest, a lot of breweries, great turnout. Who else is impressing you here today? You know, there's so many breweries here today. I know, it's a lot. You know, like I actually sat down while I was at work and I had some free time, and I was like writing down names and, and where they were from. Right. You know, and then I was going to pull out my wallet, right, and I was going to like check them off as I went along. That's not happening, man. No. It's just it's just too much going on. Yeah. Boy, it's just way too much. And for me to like pinpoint one and go, wow, I really like what they're doing. I, I can tell you this. I don't know what the brewery was, but a buddy of mine, I went and got two beers and brought it back. And, and he was like, okay, where'd you get that from? And I was like, I don't know. It was from somewhere over there. You yeah. Know? And then he goes, all right, same thing to you. I, got, I don't know where I got it from, but <laughs> taste this. And I'm like, wow, somebody did like a triple blend sour i don't know who it is there's a lot of sours here there's a lot of sours rich has here got one on. yeah rich has got one on yeah but somebody did again somebody did <laughs> a triple blend sour i don't know who you are but i'd like to give you a big hug <laughs> mr clean wants to give you a big hug there you go it was a solid beer man really yeah i mean i don't know how you feel this place is heavy on the ipas and we yeah. knew that coming in yeah. So when Rich and I were kicking it around saying, hey, man, you know, like, what should we do and what are we going to bring? And I said, let, listen, man, let me just break it down. Here's what we should do. Yeah. Everybody's going to be bringing an IPA. You put it on a scale, it's going to tilt hard to the right. I, yeah. Yeah. So we came with the Ogil Martin. 
which is the um, the stout. Right. You had a taste of it. You know yeah. what it's like. It's good. Yeah. It's you know, good. And I, look, look, I don't want to just chew Rich's horn, but that's my beer, man. Yeah. I'll drink that all day long. It's good beer. And then he brought the sour porter. So we wanted to be a little bit different. You don't see too many sour porters, man. No, you don't. You that, don't. That's why I, I, when I go back, I'm not going to pat them on the back. I'm going to hug them. <laughs> I'm going to, like, give them a big man hug. There you go. You're going to be like, man, well, stop, stop. People are watching. People are watching. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I remember last year here, it was a great event, too. A little bit of a different layout. I, I, I like that they opened it up a little more. But uh, last year was super, super. IP Everyone had IPA, double IPA. Some people only had that. Right. Uh, this year there is a little bit. I mean, it's, it's still IPA heavy, but but there's a little bit more of a diversity going there's on. Some goes, you know, there's, there's some goes. Yep. There's some goes. Yeah, there's yeah. Some, there's, uh, Brooklyn cider, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's some there's some good things flowing around. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's I think. Events like this is great. It's great to see, despite the weather, you, you know, they sold yeah, out. You got a full a house. shit show. I mean, just yeah. look up at the sky. I was like... Yeah, it's shitty. Rich and I both were like, did you pack the sweatshirt? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not going to be good, man. And we were kind of feeling the vibe of, like, if they put us out with no no cover, right? it's done. Right, I'm yeah. Like, we've been up since 2.30 this morning. We brewed today. He was he was telling us, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's our Saturday routine. You know, we brew every Saturday, yeah. and uh, you know, it's a time we get to blow off steam, man. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. And anytime we get together for events at Bridge and Tunnel, it's a lot of fun, man. You know, you've been there. Yeah, Bridge and Tunnel is a great place. Always enjoy, always enjoy going down there, man. Um, so yeah, man, anything else you want? You want to let us know anything else you got? You got going on in the beer world that's uh, worth talking about? We're always trying to. You know, I, I drive the bus. I drive for New York City Transit. I drive for a living. So, you yeah. know, there's not a lot of times. I mean, you, you get interaction with people, but there's a lot of time, downtime, where the mind just keeps working. And Rich is the same way in his job. Yeah. You know, the, the mind, the wheels are always turning. And during the course of the week, we touch base. Like, I'll hit him up with something, and he'll, he'll shoot me back a text. And, you know, we're always trying to, we don't ever want to copy people. Sure. I mean, really, there's there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't want to do that, you know. I don't want to say we want to be on the forefront of things. Yeah. He has been on a lot. Forfy Cream Ale. Yeah, that's really I good. Mean, really, he rang the bell on that one. Yeah. And then it just like took off. You see, a lot of people were, were doing at that time Forfy Cream Ale. Yeah. You know, so a lot of big places. Yes. That, there's stories behind that. You should talk yeah. to Rich about that one. <laughs> okay. I'm that, that's off the that. mic kind of talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. on the down low on the down low all right all right all right but um i don't know you know listen man we just want to make solid beers and we want to make people go wow i'm a fan of beer dude i want the wow factor yeah i don't want the same old bullshit we're allowed to curse yeah of course i don't want the same old bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah. really i mean i'm being honest you know i mean a lot of things are very repetitive i'm just True. hoping that at some point that you know that ipa ship's gonna sail Right out. <laughs> because for me, it, it sailed. It's gone. Right. It's done. We brew IPAs because technically we have to. Right. You know, that's what people want. That's fine. But we also want to say, hey, man, why don't you try this? Check this out. What do you think about this? And they right. go, oh, wow. You know, it's like, I don't know. And I think I think you see it. I mean, IPAs are still, they're still really big. They're going to be current for a while. They but are. But it's going to drop off at some point. Well, I feel like it's almost... That you're seeing it's that at now. The edge, you're right? seeing it now, yeah. Because I mean, even even again, this event here this year, it's it's a lot. There's still a lot of them here, but yes. it's a lot less than what it was yes. last year. Exactly. You know, and that's uh, again. I don't want to say we want to be on the forefront. You know, we want to stand there waving the flag. But you know what, man? There's other beer styles out there. Yeah. Check it out. Brew something other than an IPA. How about that? That's yeah. a call to all the brewers. Brew something other than an IPA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, absolutely. Get creative. Absolutely. Because uh, I remember when I first started brewing five years ago, and, and to some people that are probably listening, go, oh, five years he's been brewing. I've been brewing with guys that got 20, 25, 30 years experience, and I'm not talking about Rich. Yeah. I'm talking about with Pete at the homebrew shop. Yeah. Pete Tripp. Pete Tripp, he's a good guy. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Shout out to Pete. That's right. Shout out to Pete, homebrews and hand grenades. Yeah, homebrews Matter and fact, hand let me grenades. Raise my grass to Pete. Here, cheers, Pete. Cheers, if you're Pete. listening, cheers to you. We love you, Doctor Beer. Doctor Beer, that's right. But me it's and a good Dr. dude. Beer, we did smoke beer. You tasted it. Mm -hmm. Something different, right? Really good. I love. I love a good smoke beer. You barely see that style. 
You barely see exactly. that. Exactly. So these are things that we want to try to bring up to the forefront. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't have to be a, for, a front runner. It doesn't have to be like an IPA, you know, where everybody's going gaga for it. Sure. But again, when you finally put your lips to it, you, you let it settle in your mouth. You go, wow. It's a different experience. Wow. Yeah. That's that's all I can say is, wow. You want the wow? I mean, I don't know about you. I want the wow factor, dude. I do. I really, I want it. You know, and a lot of times I, I get, I feel like I'm deflated with a lot of the shit that I taste. Yeah. You know, there's certain breweries around that I really, I won't even go to anymore. I just no. can't. Yeah. You know, they're heavy laden on the IPAs. Yeah. But, you know, again, that's the craze. It is. What else? I mean. It is. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to, I I love a well-made IPA. And, so do and, I. And, and, and double IPA. But, I mean, I don't, like. Even just, just just if you want to prolong your drinking, you, you, you need to mix it up. You can't be doing those yes. heavy 9%, 8% beers all right. night. And it's great to have different perspectives. Like, I want to see more people doing the Pilsners. I'm, I, I'm glad that the Sours and the Gozes are, are kind of coming it. back. and, and be, it. Getting yeah. Love a good stout, good porter, you know? That's I, it. And when October rolls around, you want that sweet October Oh, fest, yes. Right? Absolutely. You Absolutely. Know, you want those kind of beers. Yes. You know, obviously, certain things are seasonal. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's fine. But you know what? You, you got to start digging deep. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to dig down, man. Yeah. We're trying to really sift through the shit. Absolutely. That's what it comes out to. We're sifting through the shit, man. It's almost like walking through fucking high grass, you know? And you're like... <laughs> Oh, Rich, what's on the other side, man? You got the fucking headlamp on? <laughs> it's like, don't worry, I got it. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this summer is going to be a big, a big sour summer. I think sours yeah, are going to be are going. You're going to see a lot of breweries. Every brewery is going to have a sour. And uh, you know what? There's 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 a lot of good ones out there. There is. There really there is. is. And you know, sour is an interesting style because when I first had sours a couple of years back. I didn't know what to make of them. You know, I wasn't a big, I, man. wasn't I, a big fan. Yeah, you know? exactly. I was the same, man. I wasn't. I was kind of on the fence. Yeah. And my buddy's like, "Oh, you got to try this." And I'm same. Like, all right. And and he's looking at me like he's all geared up. Like, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? But he, yeah. And yeah, I'm yeah. still like, "Oh, you got to let me let it settle in for a little bit." You know, give yeah. me a minute. You know, let me. Let it, it's so when you first try a sour, it's so different than anything. You know? It is. It totally is. And but the thing is, with that, it all depends on how they went about brewing it. You know, it, it, right? You know, how they how they came to the conclusion that this is it. You yeah. know, we've done so many different things. You There's know? a lot of good sours out there now. There is. I mean, there I, I really, I really do enjoy them now. Hey, maybe hopefully it's gonna be the next great, next great craze. I, I think it is. I think that's and where it's hopefully going. Hopefully, they won't beat that one to death. No, they will. <laughs> they, they will. They're, they're it's guaranteed. Be, you guarantee, yeah, I'm guaranteed. You guarantee that, that I guarantee that with a handshake. I with a right? handshake. They, they'll they'll beat any style that's profitable to death. It just it just that's just the way it is. But you know what though? Through that process, the people along for the ride will get to drink some great beers. Yeah, you're and that's right. what it's about. You're right. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yo, dude, it's always a great time talking with you. Yeah. I, I, I met you guys at B and T. Yeah. And I met your buddy. I didn't. I, I was gonna sneak up on him. Yeah. I felt bad for him because he's a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. He's man. a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was down at um, what's the name of the place? Uh, down at Greenpoint. Uh, Keg Atlanta. Keg Atlanta. Yeah, he's he goes. He's right, everywhere. So he was he's there. Everywhere. He was at the bar and yeah. he had his Pittsburgh Penguins, Penguins jersey yep. on. And I was like, should I say something to him? <laughs> and I'm like, his team is getting the shit kicked out. Of him. Should I just like tap him on the shoulder? You should have. Because I'm a disgruntled Rangers fan. Right. I right. said, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave him alone. You should have done it. I Shout out to Perry. Next time. Next, Next time. time. Yep. Next Shout time. out to you, buddy. I feel <laughs> sorry for you. Oh man, all, th thanks so. I know, I know you got to get back, but but yeah, but thanks yeah. so much for hopping on the show, man. Oh, it's great, great having you on. Good stories. Anything else you want to leave the audience with? Anything else you want them to know about what you're doing, Bridge and Tunnel? Anything like that? I think that's it. There's no BT BT exclusive today. You know, it's just yeah. that. Hey, man, we're trying to move the move the ship forward. Yeah, that's it, man. And we're just trying to keep keep pace, and we're not trying to do what other people are doing. We're trying to be above what they're doing you know what I'm saying yeah and that's not saying it in a bad way we're not trying to say like hey look at us that's, right that, it's not that's, that's not what it is it goes back to the wow factor you guys are doing things that interest and excite you yes man right. I, I, you that's know, a great that's a beautiful thing we, we hang out in the back all right last thing no this, go, this go for it go for it. it we did an imperial style yeah and rich and I mold over it for an entire year Wow the Diogenes, you had it when yes. you came down. Yeah, I, I enjoy that beer. All right, well, that one, really, I mean, it was 
if at one point it was going to go down to shit him. And, uh, and we both kicked it around and said, listen, man, we're going to do this or we're going to do that. Okay. We're going to correct this. We're going to make this right. It wasn't so much a correction. You know, the issue was it was heavy laden cacao. Okay. And cacao just kill you, man. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like a bad IPA <laughs> that you need a tongue depressor to right. scrape it off your tongue. Uh, Power record, so, right? Yeah, that's it. There you go. So we worked on it, man. We worked it out, and you you got the end result. It's very good. It was tasty. Oh yeah, you definitely. Know, so sometimes you got to sit on things a little bit longer. Yeah. You know, you got to put it on the back burner. And go, yo, we'll, we'll come back to it. I don't know the time. Absolutely. So, you know, that's. I guess that's about it, man. I love Rich. He's a good great dude. guy, man. Fucking solid. Dude. Yeah. Solid yeah. guy. And, Stand up and, guy for sure. For those that are out there listening, come on down to Bridge and Tunnel Brewery. There's something for everybody, man. And there's some wow factor there. Absolutely. And uh, and every year you got Rock'em Sock'em Robots, too. That's so. exactly right. You'll be there. <laughs> I will I be there every be year. There. Rock'em Sock'em fucking Robots. It'll get bigger and bigger. I mean, last year it was it's like... a good turnout. It was a good turnout. It yeah. was. Yeah, and yeah. the main thing was everybody had a good time. That's what's most important. At the That's end of the it, day, man. you have a good time. That's it. Yeah. It's a nice night out. Because when you go back home the next day, maybe you're a little hungover. Maybe two That's days. All right. Maybe two days later, two days going, later. Yo, you know what? I had a good time. That's it. That's exactly, <laughs> and that's what we're all about, man. Absolutely. We want to bring smiles to people's faces and want to make people happy. Again, I love Rich. Big shout out to Rich, my mentor, Bridget Tunnel. <laughs> there you go. No, what else can we say? What I can say, you? Mr. Clean signing out. Mr. Clean signing out, man. Thank you so much for hopping on the show. Thanks, uh, brother. Always great running into you, man. And uh, we'll have a beer later today. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah man. Cheers. Cheers, dude.